Browser automation has always been a pain point in development. If you've ever worked with Selenium or Playwright, you know the door. Dealing with selectors, handling authentication, managing timeouts, and don't, don't even get me started on maintaining these scripts when websites change. One tiny website update and your whole automation breaks. But that's all changed with Browser Use, a game-changing library that leverages AI to handle all these complexities for us. Instead of writing detailed automation scripts, we can simply tell the AI what we want to do in plain English and it figures out the rest. In this tutorial, we are going to build our LinkedIn automation tool that automatically navigates to LinkedIn, searches for specific posts, and then extracts the post data in a structured format that we can use. So, let's get started. Okay, before we can use browser use, we need to set it up first, so let's do this real quick. Make sure you have created a new fresh folder and you are in your favorite IDE. And the first thing that we are going to do is to install UV. A fast new package manager. UV is like pip but much faster and so much easier to use. And here's how to do it. So for Mac and Linux users just run the script and then we need to make sure that we are using the right Python version because browser use requires Python 3.11 or higher and therefore we apply this command here. UV VLAN minus minus Python 3.11 and then we act, activate our virtual environment with the usual command. And now with the activated environment, let's install the dependencies for browser use so we can use this with uv pip install browser minus use. And finally, we will install Playwright with Playwright install. And Playwright is actually a end to end front-end testing framework but it's also quite popular for browser automation and therefore it makes perfectly sense for browser use to use playwright for all the browser uh, activities okay before we can write our first browser use agent we need to set up our .env file so create a new one .env file and there we have a key openai api key and there pay, please paste in your api key and if you don't know how to get it i will show you this in next section now. So if you need help how to find or create the OpenAI API key, just visit openai.com. We are here now on the front screen, then go here on login, hover over it, then we click here on API. Usually you will then need to log in, okay? And then we click here on the settings. We click here on the API keys, create a new secret key. You can give it here a name, and select a project if you want to because the projects that you can organize the usage on the cost and so on and so let's quickly do this browser use and then i simply select this project here create secret key and there we have our token and that is what you actually then need to place into the dot env file Okay, great. Now that we've set up our environment, let's create a new Python file. Let's call it agent.py. And in here, I will pass an example agent provided by the browser use documentation just to see if everything works. And then we run the agent by typing python3 agent.py into the terminal. Wait a little bit. And we should see that our browser, in my case, Chrome, is popping up. And if you then see these different colorful rectangles, we know the browser use works. Nice. All right, now that we've seen our basic agent in action, let's dive deeper into what makes browser use so powerful. This will help you understand how to build more sophisticated automations later. Let's look at our agent most basic form again. There are two required parameters here. The task parameter, this is what, where you tell the agent what you want to do in plain English. And the LM parameter, this is where we specify our language model. But here's where it's getting interesting. Browser use gives us a ton of additional configuration options that we can use to make our agent smarter and more efficient. By default, our agent has vision capabilities enabled with use vision equals true. And this means it can actually see and understand what's on the web page. And you can disable this if you want to reduce costs by setting it to false. One super helpful feature, especially when you are developing, is the ability to save conversation logs. 
This is invaluable when you are trying to figure out why your agent might not be doing exactly what you want. And speaking of debugging, when we run our agent, we get back much more than just the final result. We can access all sorts of useful information, for example, the URLs, see what URLs the agent visit, the screenshots that the agent made, the action names, so see what action it took, and the extracted content, so the content it found. And what's really cool is we can make use of new, more intelligent models like O1 or O3, so the reasoning models that takes care of the planning. And then we have our other model, so the GPT-40 with vision capability that is executing it. So we are having the best of two worlds combining. And we do this by using the plan LM key and there we specify again a new LM object, but this time with O3 mini as um, the specified LM. And with the planner interval key, we can configure how many steps we want to plan ahead. Now with this knowledge in mind, let's uh, start with our LinkedIn automation. Therefore, I will now modify the task. So go to this, go to this LinkedIn page of Langchain and then uh, investigate the latest five posts and extract the title and URL of posts regarding AI agents. Okay, great. And now again, let's execute our agent with Python 3 and then agent on Pi and let's see what is going on. Okay, we see again that the my Chrome is popping up. And we are now actually getting here redirected to the LinkedIn login because this is a fresh new instance and it has no clue about my logged in information and therefore yeah we're not really getting further. And so this is quite a common obstacle in browser automations to deal with authentication in general. And there are now two approaches that we can follow. The first one is actually to log in every time and also need to deal with username and password, maybe um, two-factor authentication as well. Or the other way and a more elegant way is to connect browser use with our existing Chrome instance profile and make use of it. And this is exactly what we will now do with the help of our specific playwright configuration. So let's do this. All that we need to do is to configure this browser object here, the browser that is coming again from browser use, where we define a browser config. And now I'm here on Mac and we need to specify the path to our Chrome instance. So this is the default path usually. And what we don't now need to do is to provide our agent this browser object. So we can simply do this here by browser equals browser. And now it should use my Chrome instance profile where I'm, I'm already logged in to LinkedIn. So let's check it again. And we see, yep, already I see here my batch, my plugins. Okay, so there is maybe an issue. Okay, there is an issue going on here, so let me stop it. Because, uh, oh wow. What's also important is, in this case, it can only be opened once, so I had it already open, so make sure that here Chrome is stopped. And then we start it again. And we see now that we are using now my LinkedIn profile and we can see the long chain page. Okay, we see here this arrow that the model O3 mini does not exist or we don't have access to because I need to explicitly tell which version exactly. So I just looked it up here on the OpenAI page and now uh, we should have the correct model in place. So let's try it again.
Okay, we can see now that our LinkedIn browser automation worked successfully. We have all this huge raw data, but this is at the moment not really helpful for us. Let me also show you an example here of the conversation, Jason, because here are all the steps that our agent has done to achieve this goal. And we see here the page summary also with our five posts, the title and URL. And yeah, I mean, this is good, but not very useful. And we need a way to explicitly select and extract just the post data we care about, the titles and URLs. And let me show you how we can transform this messy output into a clean structured data using Pydentic. So first let's define exactly what we want to ex extract from each post. And therefore we define here a new class. Let's call this LinkedIn post. And this inherits from the base model and the base model is coming then from Pydentic, but let me finish this one here. So we are interested in the title, right? This is a string and also the URL as well as string. And then we need to create another class to represent the collection. LinkedIn posts, so plural, again, inherit from base model. And here we say posts equals the list of type LinkedIn post. And then we need to import this bad boy here. This is coming from Pydantic, import base model. And then from typing, import our list. Great. So see what we're doing here? Instead of dealing with all the raw text, we're telling our software exactly what pieces of data we want to pull out. And this is like giving our AI agent a template to fill it out. And now let's modify our automation to use this structure. Therefore, we define here a controller and we use the controller class from browser use. And here we specify the output model equals to our LinkedIn posts. And with the controller, so we need to import this one from browser use, we can further enhance the behavior of our agent. There you could also define some custom functions, but this is not the scope of this video. And then we need to, again, pass this controller down to our agent as we did with the browser. So let's do this. Controller equals controller. Great. Okay, now we will rename our result to history because this is not the final result. And then we use here history and there we call then here the final result. So we need to invoke this. Okay, uh, I have now included here a snippet and let's further break it down what's happening here. So this is where the real magic happens with our data processing. First, we check if we got any result from our automation. Then we are ta taking the raw JSON result and telling Pydantic to validate and convert it into our LinkedIn posts model. So think of this like running our data through a filter. Pydantic checks if everything matches our schema and then converts it into a proper Python object we can then work with. And here we are doing two important things. So with parse model dump, converts then our Pydantic model back into our regular Python dictionary. And with JSON dump, this writes this dictionary to a file with the intent to making it nicely formatted. And then finally, we're also then printing out um, the extracted posts we got here. So let's see if it works as expected. Okay, great. And now this worked. So we can see here again all the steps that our agent has taken to achieve his goal. And finally, we see here then also the output from the for the print here. 
And we have also like our JSON file that we can see here where we have structured in a nice way the title and the URL of all the AI related agent stuff. So this is actually quite cool. So remember, we easily built a browser automation with the help of browser use. We connected our existing Chrome profile, profile with the browser configuration here. We further then taken it down with our planning reasoning model by defining the plan LLM with the O3 mini. And then finally, we converted all this huge raw data with the help of pydenting models into a nice structured JSON file. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.